compliments of the season to everyone out there i want to wish you merry christmas and happy new year in advance shall we pray father we bless you this day for the grace we have received god to be gathered unto you be exalted in jesus name as we hear from you briefly speak your mind to us thank you lord because of answered in jesus name we pray once again i say merry christmas it's not something new that today marks the 25th of december 2022 everywhere christmas is being celebrated almost in many parts of the world without the exception of our dear country nigeria and we would say that most times christmas is associated with dining whining going out uh, coming in the exchange of gifts and so on and so forth yes all these things will not be out of place whenever we talk about celebrations but there's a need for us to remind ourselves the reasons why jesus actually came into the world before we go on shall we turn our bible to isaiah chapter 9 verse 6 isaiah chapter 9 verse 6 the bible says for unto us a child is born unto us a son is given and the government shall be upon his shoulder and his name shall be called wonderful counselor the mighty god the everlasting father the prince of peace we take note of certain things here the first the bible says unto it so a child is born and unto us a son is given today jesus is given to us as a gift one of the things that gladdened the hearts of man today is gift especially when that gift is not what your ability could produce gift is free and you appreciate a gift more when it's something that your life needs not just what you want something you need but you can't get by yourself and that's what we talk about today talking about the birth of jesus god gave us jesus as a gift and we should not allow the celebrations to take our gaze off the significance of that birth of jesus which is what i actually want to remind us today i'll be speaking on just seven uh, things that we need to remember each time we talk about the birth of Jesus Christ. The first is that the birth of Jesus reminds us of God's love to mankind. God's love to mankind. It's not just about the eating and the drinking. The main thing is knowing, remembering that God loves us. The Bible says in John chapter 3 verse 16, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. For God so loved the world. This is agape love. It's not a kind of love that is conditional. The Bible says in this, He showed his love Why we sin as Christ died for us. So it's an unconditional love. The kind that no man can show to a fellow human being. Then number two, whenever we talk about the birth of Jesus, it reminds us of our hope of eternity. It reminds us of hope of eternity. That same John chapter 3 verse 16, the Bible says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. The birth of Jesus is what gives us assurance of everlasting life. Today, if not for Jesus, if not for that gift of God to mankind. When man sinned in the Garden of Eden, man died spiritually. And eternal death was upon man already. But thank God for Jesus who came into the world to die for us so that we could receive his life. The eternal life of God that man lost in the Garden of Eden. So anytime we celebrate his birth, it reminds us of that hope of eternity. Then number three, it reminds us of our reconciliation with God. 
It reminds us of our reconciliation with God. I said earlier, when man sinned in the garden, he died. Death means separation. When man sinned in the garden, he was separated from God. But Jesus came and reconciled man to God, reconciled God to man. And that was why he died on the cross. The cross is a symbol of reconciliation. Each time we now think about his birth, we remember that great work of reconciliation he has come to do, which he accomplished on the cross. And in him today, we are reconciled. All things are reconciled. Then number three, when we talk about the birth of Jesus Christ, it reminds us of our new status in Christ. Uh, that should be number four. It reminds us of our new status in, in God. The Bible says in John chapter 1, verse 11 to 13, that he was in the world and the world was made through him, yet the world did not know him. He came to his own and his own people did not receive him. But to all who did receive him, who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God who were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. Thank God for the birth of Jesus that guarantees us a new status in God. Before Jesus came into the world, before he was born, after man had sinned in the garden of Eden and man had died, man lost sonship, man lost identity. But thank God that in Christ Jesus we are born again. In Adam we were born sinners. But through Christ and through a second birth in him we receive a new standing. Now we are no more aliens. We are no more slaves but children of God. Thank God for the birth of Jesus that has ushered in that. Then number five whenever we talk about the that of Jesus, it reminds us of our victory over sin. Our victory over sin. Through the birth of Jesus and through his death on the cross for us. The Bible says in Romans chapter 6 verse 14 Romans chapter 6 verse 14 that for sin shall no more have dominion over you. For ye are not under law but under grace. You are no more under law but under grace. This could only be made possible by the birth of Jesus. Before Jesus came into the world, we were controlled by sin. We were subject to sin and the motions of the flesh. There was nothing we could do, but thank God that Jesus came to liberate us from the dominion of sin. Death number six, eight that we talk about the birth of Jesus, it reminds us of the destruction of the works of darkness the destructions of the works of darkness the bible says in first john chapter 3 verse 8 first john chapter 3 verse 8 that to this end the son of god was revealed that he might destroy the works of the devil it was revealed that he might destroy the works of the devil the birth of jesus has given us access to gain victory over all the works of darkness I don't know what work of darkness is prevalent in your life. We, you need to believe, you need to know that it is illegal for such in your life because Jesus has come into the world and his revelation was to bring about the destruction of the works of darkness. It may be in your home, in your marriage, in your academics, in your career, in your ministry. As we celebrate today, don't let your attention be on the food, on the drink, but let it be on the works, the significance of the birth of Jesus. Then lastly, today, the birth of Jesus reminds us of a, the power he has given us over death. It reminds us of our victory over death. If you look at John chapter 1 verse 4, John 1 4, the Bible says, in him was life, and that life was the light of man. In him was life, and that life is the light 
of men. In Jesus, we gain victory over death. Not just over spiritual death, but over eternal death as well. That's one of the reasons anyone born once will die twice, will die spiritually, will die physically, will even die three times, and will die eternally. But anyone born twice will die once. If you are born twice, born biologically, physically by your mother, and born by Jesus through a second birth, you only die physically. That's if you are unfortunate to be alive when Jesus comes. But spiritual death, you've defeated. Eternal death, you've defeated. And this has been made possible through the birth of Jesus and his finished work on the cross for us. Now these blessings can only be evident in your life can only be evident in my life when I receive this gift that God has given mankind. Don't forget that Isaiah chapter 9 verse 6 says that for to us a child is born. It's not something that we can dispute. Nobody can dispute the birth of Jesus. We know Jesus was born. There are so many evidences in the scripture, outside of the scripture, even in other religions that I found to the fact that Jesus was born. But the reception of Jesus as a son is something we must make decisions about. That's why it says a son is given. A son is given. He was born a child. You can't dispute that. But you need to accept the gift. That's why it's given as a gift. Jesus as a son of God is a gift to us which we must accept if we want to enjoy all the blessings and the benefits I've spoken about. When we accept that gift that God has given us in the person of Jesus, then we can now talk about the blessings in that Isaiah chapter 9 verse 7. It says, Of the increase of his government and peace, there shall be no end. Upon the throne of David and upon his kingdom, to order it, and to establish it with judgment and with justice from henceforth even forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. When we accept this gift of Christ in our lives, it assures us, number one, of his government in our lives. It says, and the government shall be upon his shoulders. It becomes the one in charge over the affairs of our lives. The devil can no more control. Then, we enjoy his wonderful counsel. Some versions will say wonderful counselor. Why some will say wonderful counselor? Whether he's a wonderful counselor or is wonderful and is also a counselor, there's an assurance that you begin to enjoy his counsel in your life. Then aside that is called the mighty God, you begin to experience the might of God, the power of his might. Remember Apostle Paul, he says that we know him. The power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his suffering. There, there is the power of God. There is the might of God that you begin to enjoy in all facets of your life. When you accept this gift, then the Bible calls him eternal God. Eternal God. You receive eternity into your life. You receive eternal life into your life. It's one of the blessings it brings. Then finally it says the Prince of Peace. The Bible says, my peace I leave you to, my peace I give you, not as the word gives. When you accept this a gift of Christ into your life, you receive the peace of God. In the world today, there is promise of peace everywhere. There are movements all over the places uh, for peace. But none of this can guarantee the kind of peace that Jesus has brought to us. He says, my peace I leave you to, my peace I give you, because himself is the place of peace. I pray as we celebrate Christmas, no matter what we believe about it, whether we believe that Christmas celebration has a pagan and Roman origin, whether we believe it was a day uh, I marked for celebration of the sun, the God of sun, or whatever it may be, as long as as a Christian, you believe that you are using that day to remember the birth of Jesus, Think, reflect on this significance and that's where you can enjoy the full benefits 
of his birth. I pray once again that as we we'll celebrate, as we tell others about the birth of Jesus, may we not miss out of the blessings that the birth brings us in the name of Jesus. Shall we pray? Father, we bless you once again. From this moment, be exalted in Jesus' name. As we have had your word, let your word work wonders in our lives. Thank you, Father, because of answered. In Jesus' name, we pray. Thank you. Stay blessed.